Hello friends! Um, I'm going to be teaching a slow flow and meditation this morning. We'll go ahead and get started. We're actually going to get started on the floor today, um, starting on our backs. I did want to mention that today we're going to be working a lot into the shoulders, so keeping that in mind in case we have any sort of tension, injuries, um, any sort of tightness up in here, to be mindful of that as we go through today's practice and just accommodate for what you need. As a reminder, I'm always here to help guide you. I'm never here to make you do anything that would feel uncomfortable, so if at any point you need to modify, add a different variation, or come out of the flow completely, that's always available to you. So as I mentioned, we'll go ahead and get started on our backs today on the floor. Hopefully you can still see me well enough. I'm finding a comfortable posture so we're just going to take some big, deep breaths to start. <sighs> Settling into the practice, into the space. <sighs> Letting any tensions or distractions fall away. bringing your attention to this space, to your body, and to your practice. As I mentioned, today we're going to be doing a slow flow in meditation. Our meditation at the end is focusing on gratitude and things that we're grateful for. So if you'd like to set an intention and perhaps your intention has to do with cultivating gratitude today, that would fit in very lovely with our meditation. But if not, feel free to set an intention for anything that calls to you today. Intentions are a wonderful way to focus our attention so that energy flows where we want it to. Wonderful. We'll get started with a few little postures here on our back. The first option is to keep the right leg bent as we extend the left leg, reaching it up towards the ceiling, flexing toes towards the face, firming the muscles in the left leg maintaining engagement. If this is enough of a hamstring stretch, stay where you are. The leg can be down here, could be here. The pose doesn't much matter where your leg is, it's where you feel stretch. Beginning to build a little bit of strength by engaging through the core, extending the leg. If you can hold on to the backs of the thighs while trying to keep the shoulders and chest on the ground, feel free. If this is where your hamstring stretch is, remain here. If you'd like to extend the right leg, feel free as well. Just enjoying some big breaths as we take a big long stretch in the hamstring today. Maintaining strong engagement through our left leg's toes by keeping them flexed. You can work between pointing and flexing the toes if you would like, as long as we keep the muscles in the legs firm. So if you're holding onto the backs of the thighs, you should be able to feel your hamstrings turn on. Wonderful, releasing the hands if you've taken this variation. Hold down on your right hip. Leg can either be bent or extended. Just as a reminder to slowly lower the left leg until we get a nice stretch. Start to feel it on the inside of the thigh. And if the leg is floating, wonderful core stretch once again. But if this isn't quite comfortable, you can always bring it back in and release. Or if you'd like to let the foot fall all the way to the ground, you can, once again, pull the right hip down to the earth. Notice how my left leg 
reached up from the ground when I did that. So we're not quite warm enough, at least I'm not quite warm enough, to have my left leg on the ground and right hip on the ground, but we're trying to maintain hip engagement. So find what feels good. You can always pull the left leg down along your space if floating the leg or lifting and lowering doesn't feel comfortable as well. Take one more big breath here. On your next inhale, pull the left leg up towards center. This is where if the right leg was bent before, it may feel better to have it come long or it can remain bent as you pull both legs over towards the right side, getting a stretch, ooh, and a crack in the back in the outside of the left hip. You can always pull the bottom hip towards the left side of the room so that your hips stack a little bit more. I'm trying to pull the shoulder blades down onto the ground. I'm using a wall to kind of prop up my leg, but you can use any sort of prop if you need it. Or you can always bend um, into the right leg and place it underneath the left leg as a little bit of a support. As long as we try and keep the left leg straight so that we get a little bit deeper stretch into the outside of the hip. One more big breath here. And on your next inhale, keep the toes engaged towards the face as we pull the left leg all the way up towards the top. If right leg wasn't bent, go ahead and bend it now as we bring the outside of the left ankle to the outside of the right knee. Setting up for figure four posture. Maybe this is enough of a stretch for you today. You'd like to walk the right toes in. Maybe that's what feels better. Maybe bending into the right knee and having the shin become parallel with the crown. You can always grab in between your thighs here or extend the leg. Find what feels good. You don't have to push yourself so early in the class just to get a gentle sensation in the legs. So this is where I'm at today. While I can go deeper, choosing not to at the moment, just enjoying a small stretch in the legs. One more big breath here. Exhale, release. Take a breath. Wonderful. When you're ready, we'll do the same thing on the other side. First, extending right leg and sending it up wherever we feel stretch in the hamstring. Maybe it's here, maybe it's here, maybe it's here, whatever it may be. You can, if hands can reach while maintaining back of the head and shoulders down on the ground, you can grab onto the leg. Or you can always use a um, belt or scarf or a towel to help you in positions like this. But I like to sometimes engage through the core and just build a little bit of strength, build a little bit of heat by not using a prop, by not using my hands. So that's always an option to you. Once again, the opposite leg can either be bent or extended. You have your choice. And as always, firming through the leg muscles, keeping the toes tucked towards the face. Taking two more big breaths. On your next exhale, allowing the right leg to fall towards the right side of your space. 
keeping your left hand on your left hip is a small reminder to keep the left hip grounded into the floor. Gaze can be up towards the sky or opposite. If you have choice, the coffee is not quite kicked in. That's okay, we're gonna cultivate energy and get some nice stretching in this morning. One thing I should mention is uh, in yoga, we don't really have stretches that particularly target the knee. So if at any point you feel a lot of stress and strain in your knee, bend the leg. It's okay. We shouldn't really feel a lot of tension or tightness or kind of that pulling sensation in our knee, especially in these extended leg stretches. So if you feel that at any point, bend the knee as much as you need to help it go away. And when you're ready, inhale, come back in towards center. And I should clarify that I mean the knee of the leg that we're stretching. Um, so you can always bend into the leg a little bit to help relieve a little bit of tension in the knee if you're feeling it. Or keep the leg straight, your choice. When you're ready, big exhale as we fall over towards the left side of our space. You can always pull the bottom hip towards the right side of the room so that hips stack a little bit more. My right arm is extending out in a T. You're welcome to do this or keep it placed on the belly as long as we're trying to pull the right shoulder down towards the ground. What I was mentioning earlier is that if this kind of extended leg in both feels uncomfortable, you can always pull the left leg so that it comes under the right leg for a little bit more support. Wonderful, take three big breaths here. Gaze can either be high towards the sky or if it's comfortable in the neck, looking away from the extended leg. Wonderful, on your next inhale, gaze to the belly, pull the right leg up towards center. If you scooch your hips towards the right, you might have to readjust as we pull back in towards the center. Left leg is bent, if it wasn't already, bring the outside of the right ankle to the outside of the left leg, opening up for figure four on this side. Once again, if this isn't enough of a stretch, wonderful, find what feels good to you, find the variation. And notice that one side may feel pretty different than the other, and that's okay. Our bodies are rarely symmetrical. But if you notice, um, and it may be a little bit of a subtle difference, but I can feel that I can go a little bit deeper towards my face, so bringing my ankle a little bit more towards my chest on this side than I could on my left side. Um, and that's just totally normal. Sometimes we sleep a little bit differently. Sometimes one side just feels a little bit better than the other and that's okay. Taking three more big breaths here. Wonderful. Releasing the left leg if you've pulled it up off the ground. Releasing the right leg. Taking a breath. Checking in. How do we feel? I know it's been some small movements, but it's okay. It feels nice at times. Pulling both legs in towards center. Rocking back and forth on the low back, get a little bit of a massage if it feels comfortable to you.
Wonderful. When you're ready, making your way up into a seated posture, either rolling over onto the right side and pushing up, or rolling straight up, Yogi's Choice. From here, I'm actually going to extend both legs, sitting up onto my sits bones. If a towel underneath the hips or blanket would feel comfortable, feel free to do so. Otherwise, flex the toes towards the face. Inhale, reach the hands up high. Exhale, lead with the heart, not with the forehead. So we bend forward, stop where you feel a stretch, and relax the arms down. From here, rather than trying to reach towards our toes, pull the shoulder blades in like you're trying to pinch a pencil between your shoulder blades. Hug the elbows in towards the side body. Feel that engagement in the chest, in the shoulders. Notice how high I'm lifted off the, my legs, and that's okay. Maybe you're here, maybe you're down here, <laughs> whatever it feels like to you. Try to keep a nice straight spine and stopping where you feel sensation in your hamstrings. Once again, if it feels really tight on the knees, feel free to bend them. Take two more breaths, really trying to maintain the engagement in the upper body by really hugging the shoulder blades together. Kind of hugging together and down along the spine. When you're ready, big inhale in. Back towards the center. Shake out the legs. From here, nifty little transition. Flip over onto the left and flip up onto the knees. Find your tabletop posture. From here, we're gonna work into the shoulders a bit through cat cow. Toes in the back can either be grounded into the mat or flexed, whatever feels best to you. Hands are going to stack underneath the shoulders. With a big exhale, pull the shoulder blades up towards the sky. We'll remain here for a breath or two. Think of someone having a handle on your spine right in between your shoulder blades and they're pulling straight up and you're trying to be a rag doll. If you've ever seen someone try to pick up a cat when they don't really want to be picked up and they just kind of curl through the back almost like they're curling away from you, that's kind of the motion that we're going through in the spine. One thing that can help you out with this is to push into the mat as hard as you can and really try and pulling up through the shoulder blades. You can get a nice stretch, especially if we're tight in the shoulders this way. If this is uncomfortable in the wrists, come up onto fists instead. Take one more big breath. Wonderful. Either remaining on fists or coming back down on hands. With an inhale in, try and hug the same motion that we were doing earlier. Hugging the shoulder blades in towards each other. Let the gaze go straight forward. We're not trying to pull the head too far back. Just straight forward and gently pulling the belly button towards the floor so we get this kind of curvature in the low back. And I'm really trying to pull my shoulder blades together. One common thing that I see in this posture a lot is people hanging on their joints. And this can be really uncomfortable and dangerous over time. So instead, push into the base of the palms and hug the shoulder blades together, maintaining that nice strong engagement. Play with this, find your sensation. And when you're ready, continuing between cow posture and cat posture on your own breath. 
feel free to pause and play in each pose until you find the shoulder stretch and engagement that feels best to you. Typically we inhale into cat, cow and you can pause here for a breath or two if you'd like, but then exhaling once again to come into cat. Take one or two more breaths here. When you're ready, returning back to a neutral spine, walk the legs out behind you, kind of coming into a low plank posture. And then we're going to replace the right hand with the right elbow, left hand with left elbow, and drop the hips down towards the ground. Wonderful. Setting up for Sphinx pose. So elbows are going to stack underneath the shoulders. Hips are going to be down onto the ground. We're going to ground the feet into the floor. So I'm pushing down through the tops of my feet. I'm driving the pelvic bone into the ground, pulling up through my belly, and then pushing down through my forearms. This is a wonderful variation of a back bend in case um, something like Cobra doesn't feel comfortable on your wrists. But what we're going to do here, similar to what we were doing in cow posture, hug the shoulder blades together, really pull out from the chest, keep the gaze straight ahead. There's a tendency to drop the head back and notice how the long line in my spine from my hips all the way to my neck suddenly gets broken right there when I drop my head back. So instead, keep the long line going. Really try and pull up through the back of the head. Notice how what could have been a passive stretch becomes an active one. Wonderful. With an exhale, release. Come onto the belly. You can either come onto a cheek or onto the forehead. Take a breath. Notice how that feels in your spine. If we felt any sort of tension in our low back, then maybe coming up into Sphinx isn't quite what we need today. In which case you can come into a low Sphinx in future, which is pulling the elbows farther out from the shoulders so that they're coming beyond my nose here. And I'm having my hands extended forward, coming up almost like an assisted baby cobra but on my forearms and I can still pull them together. I still find the same um, activation. I just have my arms out longer. I know you can't quite see them, um, but I just have my forearms out long rather than underneath the shoulders. <sighs> Wonderful. When you're ready, come back up into a sphinx pose for just a minute. Curl through the toes, either ground into the knees or float the knees. It'll be Yogi's choice here in just a minute as we find a plank variation. So we're going to come into a forearm plank. So this is where either you bring knees down and you can come into a low plank or lifting knees and coming into a forearm plank would feel better for you to do so. Take a big breath. Really try to engage through the core. If you're shaking, it's okay. That means we're building strength, not that they're, we're weak. And with an exhale, drop the hips down towards the ground. Shine the chest forward. Pull the shoulder blades together. Ground down through the pubic bone. Ground down through the tops of the feet. Pull up through the back of the head. If this is uncomfortable with the low back, walk the forearms forward but still try to pull out through the chest. And with an exhale, 
Release the forehead down into the ground. Or opposite cheek. Wonderful. When you're ready, coming back up to set up for our forearm plank. If forearm plank is uncomfortable, feel free to come up into a normal plank. We're going to transition into dolphin pose. If you know that your shoulders are a little too tight for dolphin, taking down dog instead would feel wonderful today. Basically, dolphin is just down dog, but on our forearms instead of up on our hands. So maybe that helps you in case you didn't know what dolphin was. One tendency that I see a lot in dolphin is to bring the hands together and clasp them, which is certainly a variation that you can do. But for today, to help build a lot of shoulder engagement and to help kind of feel um, some nice both strengthening and tension relief in the shoulders, we're actually going to keep the forearms parallel together. Roughly forearms underneath the shoulders. I'm in sphinx pose at the moment. I'm gonna curl through the toes, float through the knees, either a high or low plank, yogi's choice. You can also always come up into a low plank before transitioning into a high plank. Drop the hips. There's a tendency to pull them up. We're not quite there yet. Take a big breath. And then pull up through the hips. Walk the toes in. I'm up on my tippy tippy toes and that's okay. Bending into the knees, another great option for you. We're going to try and keep the forehead off of the ground. We're really pushing into the forearms as much as we can. Try to keep this nice long straight spine. Either straight legs or bent legs. And we'll take a few big breaths in this space. If this gets too intense, drop it down. Or if down dog would feel better to you, feel free. This is a really big shoulder engager. Still trying to kind of squeeze that pencil in between the shoulder blades to really enjoy some activation here and really pushing down through the forearms. This is why we're keeping them parallel versus bringing them more into a triangle shape. Feet are roughly hip width distance apart. You can also walk the legs wider than the hips if that feels more comfortable to you. Take two more big breaths here. Wonderful when you're ready. Bend into the knees, release them down into the ground, hug the toes together, send the hips back towards the heels. Child's or devotional pose. If you'd like to stretch, perhaps through the triceps that we were just working so hard, keep the arms out long as we bend into the elbows. Hands can come together over the head for a little bit of a prayer posture, maybe just floating the pinkies off of the ground, maybe bringing them all the way over the head. And if it feels comfortable, you can even bring the hands back towards the shoulder blades. If this doesn't feel comfortable, head can come on the ground, hands can always come to rest on the sides of the hips. Totally letting them flop, almost ragdolling the arms.
you big breath in. Exhale. Release. Wonderful. Make your way back up to tabletop. Coming into our tabletop posture, grounding down through the left hand with a big inhale, reach the right hand up high towards the sky. Finding a big, big twist and exhaling, threading the hand in between the elbow and the knee, reaching out long, dropping right shoulder and right cheek down towards the ground. Either walking left hand out long or keeping it placed underneath the shoulder. Yogi's choice on what feels best to you. And if you're finding trouble getting a stretch in thread the needle, for a long time I had a lot of trouble with this posture. I didn't really feel it too much for me. So one little trick that I learned, reach out through your extended arm, ground down through the fingers, kind of clawing the fingers in towards the ground. Check in with the, so this would be my right knee and right hip. I kind of feel them dropping down towards the ground. So I walk my right knee back ever so slightly and pull back through my right hip, trying to open up my chest more towards the left side. Now I feel a stretch here. Maybe you do too, maybe you felt it before, but a little tip in case you're not quite feeling a stretch. And this posture is to try to open up the shoulders more towards the side that you're facing. Take a big breath. Take one more big breath, in fact, and really try to open up through the rib cage. Try to breathe deep into the ribs. Notice that that intensifies your stretch at all. If it's a good intensity, wonderful. If not, let it go. And then walking the left hand in. If we, oh, I'm on the opposite side. Walking the right hand in, my apologies everyone. And then big inhale. We open up towards the left side of our space. Exhale, release. Ground down through left hand, inhale, right hand higher, or whatever is opposite to what you just did. Exhale. Thread the right hand down, drop down through the shoulder blades. See how I'm kind of collapsing in my left side? I'm kind of dropping the hips towards the right side of my space. This is where I'm going to walk my right knee back ever so slightly. And then work to pull open through the shoulders while trying to keep the hips as level as I can. Once again. Opposite hand can either come out long towards the top of your space or remain underneath the shoulder, extending out through the right hand. If it felt comfortable to you before, it's breathe deep into the ribs. Maybe this intensifies the stretch ever so slightly. Feel free to do so or let your breath be natural. One more big breath here. Walk the hands in if you've taken that variation. Ground down through the left hand as you inhale, right hand up high. Exhale, release. Wonderful. When you're ready, make your way to your back, however feels best to you. I like to shift my knees over to one side. 
Drop the hips, take a circle, and plop it down. Walking the knee or the heels underneath the knees. Both heels and knees are going to be about hip width distance apart. From here, already starting to find engagement as we pull the shoulder blades together. Once again, pinching our pencil, hands can come down on either side of the hips. They can also come a little bit wider for a little bit more support if we're finding a lot of tension and tightness in the shoulders and it wouldn't feel comfortable for us to eventually interlace them underneath the shoulder blades or underneath the hips. Um, if you happen to have a yoga mat, you certainly don't need to, but one trick is you can always grab the outside of your yoga mat for a little bit more support or try to ground down through the forearms and elbows. If you haven't guessed it already, we're going to go into bridge. Keeping the gaze high towards the sky, tuck the chin towards the chest ever so slightly to find length in the back of the neck. Engage through the shoulders, press down through um, elbows and hands. With a big inhale in, lift the hips away from the heels. Or lift the hips away from the floor, pull the heels towards the hips without actually moving the feet. You'll feel the glutes of the, your back kind of turn on a little bit more deeply. Kiss belly button in towards spine. Feel kind of the front thighs and core start to engage in this space. Once again, keep the he head turned towards the sky. It's really important that we don't turn our neck. Let my voice guide you. One more big breath, exhale, release. Hips all the way down onto the ground. Let everything go a little limp. Take a breath here and we'll take another round. Grounding down through the arms, ground into the feet. Engage belly button in towards the spine. Big inhale in as we lift up through the hips. Walk the shoulders in just a little bit more if it feels comfortable. Try to pull up through the chest, kind of bringing the chest towards the chin, but not bringing the chin towards the chest. One big and more inhale and exhale, release. Wonderful. You can either rest here or if you'd like to take wheel, feel free to do so. Otherwise, we'll start to move into our gratitude practice. You can either remain on the back with knees bent up high or bringing soles of the feet together to open up into a butterfly posture or if sitting on the ground is or on a chair or um, couch is more comfortable to you, feel free to do so as we start to move towards the Shavasana and gratitude meditation. So taking a few big breaths. Before the eyes begin to close, you're going to remain on your back, but I'm going to sit up so that you can see um, my hands a little bit better here. We're going to pull the elbows towards each other, let the forearms rest on top of each other, and bring the hands like we're clapping together. Kind of pushing the pinkies and the thumbs together, we're eventually going to open up the hands to find a lotus mudra in the hand. So my three middle fingers, my ring finger, middle finger, and index finger are pointing away from each other. I've got this like big cup in my hands and my pinkies and thumbs are maintaining engagement. Keeping the elbows together just kind of helps with this, especially if we're tight in our wrists, but elbows can fall away if it feels comfortable for us. But first starting with hands together, once again, you can either be on your back or sitting up, 
Allow the eyes to begin to close or remain open with a soft gaze. So hands are together right now like we're clapping. And as we start to cultivate gratitude, our lotus is going to start to grow. So first thinking of three things that we're grateful for today. Just perhaps that has happened this morning or if you're eventually watching this later in the day, anything that's happened today, these can be small things like good cup of coffee or maybe you made yourself a delicious meal that nourished your body maybe you were proactive enough to wake up and see the sunrise this morning or you're gonna sit and watch the sunset this evening whatever it is allowing three things to come to mind that you're grateful for and slowly starting to spread the middle three fingers away from each other baby lotus just slowly starting to grow and then think of three things this week that you're grateful for As each one comes to mind, imagine your lotus cup kind of growing as we put each thing that we're grateful for inside. Slowly expanding. And then continuing to think of three things in life that we're grateful for. Maybe it's our education, maybe our health, maybe where we've gotten to grow up, maybe it's our parents, our family, our friends, three things in life that you are truly grateful for. And now that we've expanded outwards, working inwards, thinking of three things that we're grateful for about ourselves. Letting the lotus keep growing, getting ever bigger. gratitude pour in until our fingers can't reach any farther away and our cup starts to overflow thinking of spreading this gratitude out into the world Up, keep overflowing spreading out I like to imagine glitter coming out of my cup like glitter beautiful overflowing out of my hands but maybe you think of blue light or green light whatever feels best to you or maybe you think of water. Maybe your gratitude takes the form of water spreading out into the world. These visualizations can help us sometimes, especially as our mind begins to wander away 
from our meditation, from our practice. Continuing to cultivate gratitude. When you're ready, on your next inhale, beginning to extend the hands up above you. So if you're lying on your back, think of pulling the hands towards the sky. If you're sitting up, try and pull the hands above the head. Just let your arms reach high above the body. Continuing to overflow with gratitude. And one more big inhale. And on your exhale, reach the hands away from each other. Let them rain down towards the side. Let all of that gratitude fall over top of you. Relaxing the hands when you're ready. Bringing your attention back into the body. Wiggling through toes, wiggling through fingers. Bringing hands together like we're clapping. And bringing thumbs in between the eyebrows. To set the gentle intention of kind thoughts for yourself and others. Bringing thumbs to the lips. To set the gentle intention of kind words for yourself and others. And finally, bringing hands to the heart space to set the gentle intention of kind actions for yourself and others. Thank you all so much for joining me today. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.